Okay, so let's continue on. I know, I know I'm moving fast, and you know, hopefully we'll be able to get the rest of this in this next video. Um, the next thing about finding that I really want to do is finding in multiple documents. A lot of times you have full projects that you're working on, full projects. And well, BB BB Edit really does support projects. Text Wrangler does not. You can still search through multiple files. Command Shift F will pull up your multi-file search. And what this lets you do is you've got all these sections in, sections in here that you can search. So say um, you can actually set up new ones. So say I want to set up a whole repository for all my files, right? It's where I want to search. I have this app mark that I'm working on. So what I can do is I can hit um, other and choose where I want all, uh, where I want to add a folder. Okay, I have to add the folder here. It only takes a second. It just tells it where to go. Once you have that, you can actually search among all the files. Let's go ahead and search for the word style. And we'll search for style and hit find all. And now it's going to find all the occurrences of style. Obviously, there's 1,720 occurrences of the word style. There's a lot in here. But I can actually go through each of these and tells you what file they're in and what and uh, you know what line they're in. And I can actually click these and go view the files. And then I can actually open the file if I want. I can even edit it right here, whatever I want. Multi-file search. It's very... Uh, very convenient actually to have this multi-file search. I use it a lot for big projects. Um, the next find that I want to do is actually a is not Ajax is actually regex find. So say here, I'm in this CSS here and I've got some CSS down here for um, I've got a I've got a label dot error and a label dot h and say I had a lot more label dots. Okay, let's say I wanted to find all the things that are that are label dot something and replace it with label dot or, or instead of label dot, replace it with, uh, you know, Sean dot. So instead of selecting the text or finding it all, just hit um, Command F and turn on grep. And now we're going to type label dot. And now we're going to do the regex, okay? And actually we should, uh, we should uh, backslash dot that. Um, you don't have to do it. So label dot. And now in parentheses, okay, we're going to look for um, dot star. That means all occurrences of everything after label dot okay and we're gonna replace that with um, with label dot hello okay and so I hit um, yeah I hit replace all and that actually see it did to change these two to label dot hello it found them all and did it actually it found 14 occurrences according to growl so I'll com uh, undo that um, now what I want to do is what if I wanted to change it to hello dot whatever it was before so it would be hello dot and then you have to put in here um, backslash one is the fine. So I only have one set of parentheses, so I only have one backslash. So I can do hello dot backslash one. And what that what basically this is doing is it's going to match label dot everything and match this and remember this. Remember this as backslash one, okay? Basically I'm setting whatever this found as backslash one. It's like a variable. So I'm replacing it with hello dot, whatever that was remembered. So now you see here, I've got label that error and label that h, and it should replace it with hello dot error and hello dot h. So replace all, and there it goes. Now I've got hello dot error and hello dot h. Okay, and it actually did it with 14 times, of course. Okay, so that's how you use grep and regex in text. And actually, this can really save you a lot of, of numbless time. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is uh, checking spelling. Sometimes you have to check the spelling, and it, the Text Wrangler does have that capability. Um, you can select a group of text and just simply hit Command Shift semicolon, and you can do um, you can actually do the text. Okay, so apparently it doesn't do the selection, um, but it'll actually do the whole document. Looks like I really don't use this. Um, who spell checks in code anyway, right? Right? Am I right? No? Okay. And then, oh, okay, here's a big one. Comparing two files. Okay. So say um, say you have this file. Copy. I'll make a new one. And I'll change like I'll change like that. Okay? Now I'm going to compare these two. So I'm going to hold Command, click this, the one I just made, and click to this one. Right-click these two and do Compare Selected Documents. And now you come up with this Compare tool. Okay? It tells me that there's only one place that they're actually unmatching, which is exactly where I deleted code from. Um, normally there's a lot more differences here and you can go through them one by one and you can apply the changes to the left like that or you can apply um, you can undo or you can apply the changes to the right uh, actually so this is the one that's changed over here I just pointed you can't see me point these are the changes over here and I can actually apply those because they're missing over here if I wanted to but they show you which one's the old file which one's the new file and you can compare files like this this is something I use all the time 
very important to have this compare. Now it's not super compare like some other programs because like it doesn't compare directories and uh, you know I scroll this document this one doesn't scroll it's not like beyond compare for Windows um, but it does its job for comparing simple code documents I'll give you that. The other thing I don't like about this is that when I close the thing they're all these separate windows. Oh. Oh cool, I just found it. Okay, apparently if closing the difference window it closes the whole thing and leaves open your other window. Awesome. Now one thing that happens, if I if I'm gonna go ahead and quit and I'm not gonna save these. Now when I open Text Wrangler back up, it's actually gonna restore all that I was doing. Well, you may love that, but I really hate that. When I quit, I just wanna quit it and open fresh next time. To turn that off, go to preferences and uncheck this box, reopen from the last document. I'm not going to do it right now, but if you uncheck this, then it'll actually reopen the... It actually, if you uncheck it, it won't reopen the documents next time. The last thing that you can do is FTP. It's kind of not something TextWrangler is built for. It's just kind of something you can use TextWrangler with. If you go on to some FTP and you want to, uh, you know, let's just... Let's disconnect. Let's just log into... Uh, let's go to Square Bracket. Log into Square Bracket open up uh, a page well okay well right now I have mine set to uh, open well okay so these are HTML documents let's go into a proxy here there you go proxy here you go okay I have it set to open PHP documents in text you can actually see the little icon here so if I double click this it actually opens the file in text wrangler and you can see the file path here is FTP okay it's actually FTP so if I save this document, space, save, it's actually saving, and you can see the ground notification. It actually saved back to the FTP. So you can directly edit in line if you need to. Okay, so that's that's basically all that I have to say about Text Wrangler. It's a really, really great text editor, and I know I spoke really fast, and I apologize for that, but I really wanted to get it all in here in, I guess, two 10-minute videos. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, um, let me know, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks.